Jesus Christ, look at the management of the engines. Holy moly. Now, ladies and gentlemen, my friends of fuel economy, you know, count how many engines this airplane right here has. Obviously, one, two, three, four, five, six engines here, which are piston propellers, but also one, two, three, four jet engines. Everybody, yes. Welcome aboard the 10 engine Convair B36 Peacemaker, which was a truly remarkable plane and a plane of many firsts, obviously. It is an interesting design to mix piston engines power plants with jet engine power plants. The reason I'm here at St. Bartholomew Island Airport, which is ridiculously small, is to just to show the sheer size of this plane. Look at it dwarfing a 737 or its predecessor, the B-29 bomber. And I feel like, you know, when they built this airplane, they kind of figured out, oh my god, six very strong piston engines still aren't enough to keep this airplane properly in the air and take off. So let's trap some more jet engines on this plane. That's probably the design process here. Now the Peacemaker came out shortly after World War II. It was introduced in 1948. Over 384 of them were built, but they were already retired almost 10 years later because it would soon turn out that, you know, the jet engine B-52 bomber, for example, is much better, which is why the B-52 has a much longer lifespan than a short 10 years of the Peacemaker. But still, it was a remarkable airplane and it had immense range. It was capable of intercontinental flight without refueling, which is why Convert thought, let's make a passenger version out of this plane, the so-called XC-99, which isn't a Volvo now, but look, it had the very same engine design right here. They only built one prototype and they never came out with this plane, which is probably in hindsight a good idea because once again, piston engines were just weren't really the future for this kind of air travel. Either way, we have the wonderful plane that brought piss on the world. Peace on the world. For the Microsoft Flight Simulator, you can buy this now as an add-on for $20 and the 3.8 stars uh, aren't very promising for Tavia, which is the developer. Let's take a look at this one. I mean, honestly, I have my doubts because of the Microsoft Flight Simulator limitations, really. I think you are only able to put eight engines on a plane max. This airplane has 10. So what I think they did was in the flight simulator modeling, have these six engines and then have the two jet engines per side count as one engine. I guess that's how they did it. Anyway, let's take a look into the cockpit. Obviously not a very easy airplane to fly. It is a bit crazy of a cockpit layout right here. It is funny how much you can see it you know, from the inside. Jesus Christ, look at the management of the engines. Holy moly. But so actually this plane doesn't look that bad. I, I'm just so, I, I don't know how to, how am I supposed to fly it? All right, here's the battery. Turn that on. That powers on something. All right, here's the engine ignition. Turn it on. Okay. Yes. Yes. We've got one of the six engines, propeller engines starting up. That's good news. That sound doesn't sound very much like a piston engine though. It should be a little bit more piston-y. Okay. Good. Let's give her some fuel. Why does it sound like an airliner? Let's go ahead now and turn on the fifth engine too. Good, good, good. I mean, you'd probably sit on the ground all day just waiting for those engines to turn on. Come on. Engine number four. Let's put, her, put her, get that going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Let's turn them all on. Perfect. Yeah, look at that. And we can even see that here from inside. We, we didn't even have to look from the outside. Now we've turned on the piston engines, but how do we use the jet engines? Well, they are up here. And it's actually so... And this plane must have, by the way, kind of sucked to fly, I'm pretty sure. Look, we've got six throttle levers here, and then four more for, for the jet engines. And I think we can just very... How do I turn this on? Control selectors. What does this do? Yeah. Daughter switch. Come on. Perfect. Ignition start. They're, and yes, they're turning. Yes, and we can even see some jetness here. Oh, we're moving already. Okay, there we go. Now we must have an insane amount of power, I'm pretty sure. So uh, let's try this out. But yeah, so far, overall first impression from this aircraft, quite nice. We can even go down. We, oh, we can't really go. Okay, this is where uh, the navigator would sit. Uh, it's not, there's not really much navigation going on here. And I don't like the inability. Let's go ahead and take off and we, we can get some fresh air. Yes, and that's kind of nice that we hear more. Let's take off now, full power. Yes. This must have plenty of power now, especially when nothing is on board. We don't need a nuclear weapon here. All right, Ferv, let's do it. Yes, take a look at the immense speed and acceleration. A very fast airplane for the time. And Jesus, oh wow, we are generally quite fast here now. This is definitely jet speeds there. And there we go. Easy takeoff on the Peacemaker. Oh, not really. Maybe. 
We can now put up the huge landing gear of this airplane. And doesn't it look great? I mean, yes, it kind of looks like a flying pencil. And to be honest, the eight engine screen here is too big. We can kind of barely see the airplane, but we've taken off. Now flying this across the Atlantic probably would have been a pain in the ass. Now something I very much like is that the bomb bays here are actually animated. We can open them. There's just nothing inside because it's the Microsoft Flight Simulator and weapons are not cool and they're mines. But there we go. This plane that barely fits onto the screen has taken off. Let's see if I can land this plane. Yes. I guess stopping this one might be a bit of a different task than actually taking it off. Obviously, piston engines don't really have reverse thrust, normally at least, and neither do those stupid old jet engines, the J-42 turbojets. And that makes stopping this 100-ton airplane not much easier. Can we, uh, can we land with the door open? We can. Oh, and I see that those are actually kind of those are weapons. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Something I do see is the flaps. They uh, they are very extensive, quite a lot of flaps. So we can fly this plane probably at quite low speeds. But let's try this out. This might be genuinely the airplane with the best visibility from the outside. I mean, you have a 360 kind of dome here, really, where you can even see what's behind you. What kind of airplane has that? Other than the A350. Now, I do not appreciate this airplane being so old that it measures speed and miles per hour. That's very American, almost as American as the name Peacemaker. Also, hey, now we don't have any markings on which speeds are all right. What is this 150 miles per hour? What am I supposed to do with that information, you idiot? Okay, here we go. Coming in for landing at 140 miles per hour. Okay, here we go. Here is our airplane. And it, oh, it doesn't really fly well. Okay, okay, stop. Uh, sorry, sorry. I haven't brought peace on that landing there. That was barely survivable. There we go. We um, we landed now, and we are actually stopping quite well. The brakes are actually quite bad. All right. I mean, we have huge landing gear. It generally is huge. And despite us having no spoilers, speed brakes, we stopped her just fine. Now we have a Cessna caravan trying to take off, which is not going to go well. Mm, this caravan looks like it needs some peace brought upon. Now the Peacemaker, you know, even though it is an older plane that's complicated to fly and kind of sucked, the P-36 had a pretty good safety record. Now, of course, there were some crashes. Look at this wreckage site. And even if something happened, the 17 crew members had parachutes so they could escape from, for example, a B-36 on fire. The good question is, where should we fly next? Uh, let me see. Germany is probably a good choice. Kind of the reason this airplane exists. All right, so let me not crash this plane this time. By the way, I think I'm mistaken. Wait, there is prop reverse. Look, there is reverse thrust on this plane. It just probably doesn't work. I haven't found out a way to activate it. So this is completely wrong, I was saying. Either way, wow, this plane really doesn't fly very easily. And as much windows we have, the visibility is kind of restrained because we've got so many, like, columns here. Okay, runway 08 is right there. Let's land her. That, I don't think that was inside of the run. There we go. Let's do it. Uh, this reverse thrust doesn't work, though. I can't get it to work. But not needed at all. We can just stop very easily like that as well. So, buddy, the B-36 Peacemaker. It was never really used to drop nuclear bombs, which is where I think the problem here of the Zero Plane lays. Obviously, I think this is a decent model, but it is obviously useless. You can't really drop anything. In X-Plane, you could, but Microsoft, too vanilla. So, this plane is kind of used, but it's, you know, it's very nice to time travel to see what the brave men of the 1950s had to go through to fly an airplane with this many engines. So, everyone, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters. <laughs> Guns Killer, R27, James Deram, That Dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishititsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New The York. You've got beautiful names.